Hi guys and hi everyone. Sorry about the slight delay, some technical issues, um, but we're very pleased to welcome directors Tom Trout and Steve Brennan from our CA Partners Love Childcare Recruitment. They're going to be here today doing a presentation on how to attract and retain the best people and going over some survey data they've done recently. If you have any questions at all, pop them in the comments. I'll be keeping an eye on those. Um, and we can feed them back at the end to Tom and Steve. But yeah, I'll hand over to you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much, Julia. Um, hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so as mentioned, we are going to be covering our um, new um, Pulse survey results from, from last year. Um, so just a really quick intro. So I'm Tom, Managing Director. Um, and this is Steve, our, our Recruitment Director. Um, so just to give you a bit of an agenda, what we're going to cover today. So just a quick introduction to us, what we do, um, who we work with, things like that. We'll be looking at um, the current state of the market in terms of from, from a recruitment perspective. Um, I think it's really important just to cover a few key elements um, because it um, aligns very, very nicely with some of the survey results that, that, that we found. Uh, we'll be drawing on some key survey results that Steve's going to present back to you, um, along with um, some sort of hints and tips of, of how to implement those um, into your business. Um, talk about some future research um, uh, that, that we've got coming up, hopefully um, involved some of you as well if you're interested and then we have a qr code as well um, that you can download our survey results um so moving on so um quick introduction to us so a little bit about us at love Childcare. so um we've been in recruitment um for nine years um in january we started love Childcare about three and a half years ago um and we work across the uk and we work across what we call lanes so three different lanes within the childcare sector so wraparound care sports coaching and um children's activity activities and then nursery and early years um, we moved into the sector uh, because we wanted to make a difference um, we generally believe in in trying to help um, everyone that we work with but as the, the industry um, as a whole um, and we're incredibly passionate about adding value and, and giving back um, and we our, our team are all made up of of people that have either worked in childcare or passionate about it as well so we don't actually hire recruiters we hire people that want to make a difference to the sector um, why are we doing this very much for that reason you want to make a difference we know that recruitment within the childcare sector at the moment is is in a very very difficult spot and we'll cover a little bit why that why that is at the moment but we want to make a difference we know that the candidates expectations have changed we know that what they're looking for has changed now that can be from covid that can be through new generations coming through we know gen z look for something that's very very different in terms of what what i would look for from my first positions and things like that so we want to do this to give um, the industry, to give operators a real insight um, into what the candidates um, and, and your employees really are, are, are looking for um, at the moment. Um, the future of these surveys, we we are committing to do um, to do a poll survey every year. We want these to be bigger and better. We've taken um, we did one in 2022. We took some some key learnings from that. So this year we've actually split um, the survey into three sections. So um, wraparound care, sports coaching and nursery and early years. So we have results from each of those sections we'll talk mainly around the wraparound and sports coaching um, but all three of those results um are, are open to you as are the, the 2022 ones um and we want to we want to continue to grow these we want to get bigger and better we want um collaboration we want input from from networks and, and our clients and things like that as well so um do look out for for these if you have um, any recommendations or once you've had a had a, a look at the results at the end um if there are questions that you would like asked in the future Future. If you have ideas, please let us know. We would love to have a conversation. Um, so the labour market currently, I think this is this is really important to highlight. And this this, um, I guess, aligns with with why we are seeing so many struggles within within the market at the moment. So we are in what we call a candidate market. Essentially, that means there are a lot more jobs than qualified candidates. Um, and that will be the reason that you see that adverts aren't, aren't working probably in the right way um, or, or a real lack of, of quality applications. Um, it may be that you're seeing um, no shows or ghosting or people just not coming back to um, to their applications um a lot higher than than they ever have been and you're having to look at different routes to recruit as opposed to just adverts um the sector as a whole 
has taken a huge impact from from um, a lockdown. It's, it's almost the perfect storm, really, in a way, from the pandemic lockdown, the introduction of hybrid working. You know, suddenly that's peaking a lot of people's interest from from the sector. We're seeing a lot of people leave the sector for, for those reasons. Um, and the cost of living crisis, suddenly the you know salary has become the the biggest thing on everyone's agenda uh, because of um, costs going up, bills going up, things like that. Um, good news, dedicated funding coming into the wraparound care sector. Um, it's finally being recognised for um, the important sector that it is, which is amazing. Um, and hopefully that's going to alleviate some of the um, alleviate some of the issues that we're seeing from attracting people to the sector um, and retaining staff um, as well, as well as being able to support the growth of smaller businesses as well. So really, really exciting. It just needs to be positioned in the right way. And then it's up to us um, um, to, to make sure that we're, we're making the most of that funding, essentially. So it, as the, the sector is getting more attention, which is amazing, very, very exciting. Um, a lot more people are sitting up and taking notice. But we, as and I won't steal the, the, the results from Steve just yet. Um, I'll let him go into those. But we are the, one of the biggest things is we, we, we have some way to go in terms of educating candidates in the career opportunities that are in within sports coaching and within wraparound. And it's not just seen as a stepping stone industry or stepping stone role so what what is pulse before we go into it so what 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 actually is it so we've designed this to help uh, understand the pulse of the workforce and and understand what what today's candidates um want and, and what their needs are they have changed massively you'll see that they've changed from the 2022 to 2023 2023 results um and they're changing constantly the way that we can help you as an industry or you as an operator improve is to keep you up to date with what they're looking for, because that should play a huge part of your recruitment strategy, um, understanding your demographic, understanding exactly what it is that they're looking for so that you can build that into your offering and into your recruitment process as well. Um, and it, it, it's hopefully with, with these servers as they get bigger and, and, and better, it's going to improve the industry recruitment and retention piece as a whole. Um, and a lot more of the, hopefully the future research we're going to do will um, supplement what, what these results are saying as well. Um, so a little bit more about the data before we get into the data. So 130 respondents, um, 19 questions um, were asked. These were around um, what the candidate is looking for if they're looking for a new role what attracts them? What, what is it they're actually looking for from a new business in terms of offering, you know, salary, um, progression routes? What does that look like? What they believe that an employer can do from a retention piece. So people that are working with you right now, what can you do to make sure that you're not losing people um, or losing great people and you can you can offer them a long term career? We also asked, what is the perception around is does, does wraparound sports coaching does that have a long-term career pathway? Um, inter very interesting results from that. Again, I won't steal Steve's, Steve's thunder there, but some really interesting results around that. And then what, what do people within the sector, what do they perceive the sector from a wider society? How does that actually look from the outside looking in? Um, and then the final, final sort of thing we cover as well is around... Um, adverts and and how to advertise where to advertise what what barriers are there to stop people actually applying for your roles um we went we what the way we got these we went out to our database and um, we went out to our linkedin we went out to our instagram but we also collaborated with clients as well we actually sent these out to some of their networks some of their um, employee bases and things like that as well and again in terms of growing this in the future we would love to um, to get these out to as many people as possible. The, the bigger that we can make these, the better sample size we have. And the clear understanding we get to help 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 everyone, help the industry improve that that recruitment piece. Um, we try and target primarily experienced candidates. So um, sort of starting from one year experience all the way through to, you know, really senior senior people that have been in the industry, you know, 30, 40 years. Um, but we've got some really um, wide, we've got a good wide range of, of um, experienced candidates. We try and try and get people that are, have worked in the sector and understand it to, to, to some degree. 
free um, and we make sure that they are UK based responses. Um, so that's a little bit more about the data. Um, I'm going to pass over to Steve now who will take you through um, some of our key findings um, and sort of what he takes from those and how you can support those, uh, how, how you can implement those into your recruitment process, essentially. Um, so, Steve, over to you. Brilliant. Appreciate it, Tom. Um, yeah, guys, I guess the first slide is a little bit worrying um, if, if you break it down, but it is a potentially easy, easily solvable problem as well. So obviously the question asked was, do you feel that the wraparound care sector or industry offers a realistic long term career? And as you'll see, like the feedback was that over 50 percent of respondents said that they did not feel or they did not know whether there was a long term career prospect. Um, I think the key takeaway here for, for, for us is as an industry, and that includes us, um, are we collectively doing enough to highlight the progression routes and opportunities available to individuals, particularly at the early career stage? Um, we know a lot of individuals, their first experience of wraparound care is part time work, uh, casual work, holiday work. And it's it's really interesting to understand whether whether people are made aware of those situations early on in their career. Um, the the recruitment journey that staff go on um, throughout the organisation, there needs to be a question being asked or being discussed early on around what opportunities are available within in your organisation, but also in the wider sector. Um, are there positive stories within your team? Are there people who have maybe they started as an apprentice five, 10 years ago and they've progressed into senior operations roles? Um, have you yourself started in that sort of role and moved on into a senior role? Um, I think it's really important that we highlight that very early on and make it really clear whether that be through websites through job adverts through career pages um, and, and again i just think as a sector we need to make that abundantly clear to people on what the opportunities are short term and long term um, and perhaps linked to that there's a very similar number of people if you look at the results to this question around looking at wraparound care as a as a, an important profession wider society more than 50% of people have rated to one or zero, like not at all up to up to sort of neutral. Now, the interesting thing here is we're not, we, we as Tom's alluded to, in terms of future research, we can take the answers of some of these questions and break them down further. Um, it may be that the people who have answered very much are the people who have been in the sector for a longer time, who are well aware of the implications, um, have been involved in their communities and are able to articulate to people what the wider benefits are and they may agree and feel that that's that's positive the answers where it's a little bit lower that may be that they don't know um, and they haven't had those conversations they're not engaging with parents and schools so they may not have that that sort of pure understanding of of how wraparound care is seen um to the to the wider society and tom's alluded to it already with the the government's national wraparound program funding I think the positive side here is that where the government in particular are taking this seriously um, and they're looking at implementing some funding and supporting, it's hopefully that will change just by people having a conversation, by more children having an opportunity, by more parents seeing the benefits to their children and the people associated with it, <clears throat> that that should, should hopefully mean that, that this, these scores improve in the future. Um, again, from a, an employer perspective, from an organization perspective, it is just making sure that you are working with your community, making sure that your staff are aware of the benefits um, and, and communicating them effectively. <clears throat> um, <laughs> unsurprisingly, um, the biggest candidate motivations here are our salary. Um, Tom's already alluded to some of the challenges related to the cost of living crisis, the economic situation that a lot of people have gone through. Most people are looking, if they're looking to move, they are looking to move for an increased salary or they're, they're wanting to progress to Im improve their salary. So again, questions here from an organization, employer perspective, are your salaries competitive? Do you regularly do sort of research with your local competitors, with the UK market on hourly rates, obviously a national minimum wage has changed, particularly for over 21s, which has caused a bit of a complication. Um, but looking at having a clearly defined salary progression pathway for your roles, having minimum starting salaries for certain roles and responsibilities. Tom highlighted earlier, like I say, there's been a 
a shift in people leaving the sector post COVID in particular, looking for roles in different sectors. People were moving for roles that paid £15 an hour for entry level roles in retail, in hospitality. Um, how how can we attract them back into the sector? Um, if we can't offer the same level of salary, is there something else that we can do? Is there Are there opportunities that we can offer to people to, to want to move back? <clears throat> really interesting responses here. And obviously the one on the left in terms of the respondents of saying that um, no salary being advertised um, is the biggest reason for them being put off a role. Um, but then also poorly written or generic adverts being the second reason. One of the main challenges that we find our partners experience is when they're recruiting people is they have a lack of applications come through for their roles. Um, we know that staff are motivated by salary. So I think you, you've got to advertise that. Um, you might see sometimes competitive salary um, advertised on a role. It, it doesn't mean too much to people looking at those jobs. Um, the, the variation on within the sector in terms of what someone can offer depending on whether it's an entry level role, whether it's a very senior role, competitive, it, people need to know exactly what what salary has been offered. That might be a range, it might be a maximum, it might be a, a standard, it might be just a £11.44 if it's um, for someone over 21. Um, so making sure that that is very clear on your advert is important just to make sure that people aren't put off. Um, like I say, three out of 10 people will not apply for a role if, if that's not clear. Um, the other the other aspect in terms of poorly written generic adverts putting people off, the <laughs> the art of writing job adverts is, is a really difficult one to master. Um, there's so many considerations around what is absolutely essential to include, salary, <laughs> what is useful to include, a breakdown of the role and responsibilities, the location, the hours, um, and then what could potentially be left out of an advert to be discussed to, to be discussed during the interview process. So we're talking about progression opportunities that doesn't necessarily need to be advertised, but it's certainly something that can be discussed. We, I, I, it's difficult to say we're experts, um, but this is what we do on a daily basis. I think we have a really clear understanding of what will attract people, what may put people off, um, the the differences in demographics and areas that different wording, different job titles can help. And we do offer support to organizations from an advert perspective. Um, we can we can provide guidance, um, advice. Um, we can even host and and sort of provide advert packages for you to to sort of for us to to deliver for you. <clears throat> now this next uh, the next aspect around benefits is um is it's a bit of a difficult one to to break down and you'll see from the the feedback here that all of the the response in terms of the free benefits that people would like to see in the sector are either health related or financially related or or both um, in some aspects. I think more research is needed to understand exactly what people are looking for and how that might be implemented within your organization. But I think the important thing is people are saying that this is what they'd like to see. I know that from conversations we have with organizations who are trying to be a little more forward thinking and try to introduce bonus schemes or performance um, based bonuses based on the number of children attending profits, um, specific targets, particularly if it's a brand new provision, looking at having to yeah get to a certain number of number of children attending. Um, I think staff are very much wanting to be rewarded and recognized for the work they do on a daily basis. Um, if you're part of a small organization, you may see your staff on a very regular basis, give regular feedback and provide um, reward and recognition in some way. If you're part of a larger organization, you may not always see those staff. Um, so having a reward scheme or a bonus scheme in place is, is super helpful. Um, and I think there are lots of considerations when we look at the healthcare and, and life insurance aspect. There are lots of considerations for the financial implication to your business if you were going to introduce that and looking at the return on investment. Um, the important thing here for me is most organizations we speak to have, have not actually explored these opportunities. Um, so it's it's maybe new for the sector. We might need to research what else is happening with similar roles in different areas. And it's it's very much a, a part of our future research to try and find out 
where we might be able to support and advise and guide as well. Brilliant. And the sort of last last one here, just around sort of careers and and people looking for roles and changes. This is a much more positive um, sort of picture because um, some of the other points may may be a little bit negative. Um, but with this aspect, the the lovely thing to see here is less than twelve percent of respondents are saying that they want to leave the childcare industry. Um, although that might mean that they have plans to move away from wraparound, they might be wanting to work in some other form of, of child care it, it shows that there's real positivity around working with children and that the staff and the respondents to our surveys want to continue working with children in some way and which is a huge, huge positive and not a huge surprise because i know we all know that it's a rewarding sector and people who work with children love working with children but that it's nice to see that the stats show that despite the fact that people are obviously highlighting a few a few concerns um, the aspect of the sort of part of the wheel there that is um, highlighted in red is most people are currently happy in their role. Um, they're looking to develop in their current role or they're happy in their current role, which links us back to the first point made around those progression opportunities. Are you regularly having conversations with your staff? Are you reviewing opportunities? Are you giving staff the opportunity to apply for new roles within your organization when they become available or are you always looking for external applicants um i think employers just need to be aware that although people are happy they they do want to develop and correct and progress and um, that might not mean moving into a brand new job title with new responsibilities but it might be taking on a, an, an additional responsibility it might be just leading on a different aspect of what you do so uh, as i mentioned it's just key to key to understand that side of things um, and then just if you can see because i know it's quite small on the screen but some staff are looking to move into slightly different sectors they want to move into management and i know some of the organizations we work with have sort of management training pathways for staff um it might be once a month checking sessions just to just to upskill and develop your teams um so it's certainly something to consider <clears throat> And then last last little bit here is just around where people go to when they're applying for roles. So our respondents, as you can see, sort of nearly seven in 10 people, their first point of call is indeed um, not a huge surprise, but potentially a cause for concern. Um, and the reason I say a cause for concern, I think we all know that indeed is quite a complicated system. Um, it's th there's so much that goes on in the background. There are a huge global organization um, it can be quite expensive to utilize indeed if you do not understand how to how to sort of work your advert how to look at cost effective solutions um again this is something that we can support with we i think we're very fortunate this is something that we deal with every day this is potentially a small part of um your responsibility within your organization unless you have someone who specifically leads on recruitment and the the sort of search engine optimization the analytics the cost spend um the sponsorship for roles free roles um the different types of um subscriptions that are available all of these things are things that we can we can support you with and have conversations and, and provide guidance to too <clears throat> then the very last slide this is something tom alluded to a little while ago around um it being a candidate-led market so this will hopefully explain some experience you would like to face when you're recruiting um everybody well i say everybody but i'm assuming that everybody has been ghosted by a candidate at a different stage within your recruitment journey um someone has probably confirmed that they're going to come to an interview and then just not shown up um a candidate might have tried to negotiate post already off um, accepting an offer from you um, and candidates often speak to you and they might seem really confused about exactly what your job is um this is this is because as the stats say most candidates on average are interviewing for at least three jobs at one time they're involved in multiple interview processes um, they often receive multiple offers and the key takeaway here is is to simply understand that this is reality when you are when you are recruiting you will need to plan for these eventualities um you can't put all of your sort of eggs in one basket, so to speak, with one candidate you think is great because you may not know what else is going on behind the scenes. 
Um, you also, from our perspective, the communication is absolutely key with, with these candidates, making sure that you engage with them regularly throughout. Don't leave them for days or sometimes even weeks at a time where they do not have updates from you or they're not entirely sure what's happening in the process because to be the employer of choice and to be the person that that individual wants to join, you need to provide the best experience for them. Um, you may not always be able to offer the highest salary, but I think if you provide a great experience that you are able to articulate the, the future progression opportunities, you're able to clearly define what their job is um, and they feel as if their their values meet yours, that that could be enough to to convince someone to join your organisation. As I say, even if you're not able to offer the biggest salary um, out there, so it's it's a harsh reality. Um, and I think the reality, I mean, as we say here, on average, it's at least three jobs. I've spoken to individuals in the last couple of weeks alone who are actively interviewing and speaking with five or six different employers. Um, it's yeah, it's it's a harsh reality. Um, it's just something to be very aware of and something to plan for. Um, that's great. Thank you, Steve. Um, I think some some really interesting data points. Um, it's it's some really exciting and and good stuff going on, but there's also still a lot of work to be done with within the sector in terms of that education piece um, and making sure that we're implementing these tips into our um, into our recruitment process. Um, as as Steve has sort of alluded to, that we're here to help. You know, we're happy to have conversations and advise and um, you know do what we can to to support you. So please, at any time. Do feel free, like you can reach out, ping us some questions um, or, or give one of us a call. Um, before I start talking about the future research piece, Julia, were, th were there any sort of questions from, from anyone at all? No, there's no questions at the moment, okay. but I'm sure when people are catching up later, there will be. You guys will be keeping an eye on the comments, yeah, so you yeah. can feed back. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so future research, just to give you an idea of, of what's coming up. And again, as... As I, as I said at the start, really, it's it's we we want to work together to 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 improve this. We want to collab collaborate with other operators, with other partnerships. You know, we're all in this together. Um, there's no point in trying to be competitive and and um, in in terms of fight against each other. To um, it's it's just not going to fix fix the issue. So let's work together and let's collaborate and and hopefully move the industries forward um, that we that we love. Um, so in terms of our free future future research, what to look out for? So. Uh, we are looking at running in the summer a progression within the sector campaign. So as we've as we as Steve's articulated there, progression within the sector is is massively overlooked. People don't realize the the wealth of of um, opportunities and and different pathways and things like that that are actually open to them. So we are going to be running a campaign where we um host very very short video interviews with some great people within the sector that have progressed from you know apprentices gone on to do great things moved into different areas you know, some marketing managers into coos into um settings managers you know everything that you can think of we're going to try and cover those areas so if anyone has recommendations if anyone would like to be featured on this please reach out to us we would love to have a conversation if you want to nominate someone that's that sort of started at um you know maybe a part-time play worker and has gone on to run their own site or a franchisee or whatever that might look like please reach out we would love to have those conversations um we're also going to be doing case studies around flexible and hybrid working so one thing that came from the survey that um, candidates look for um, the third most important thing um, when looking for um, a new role is is there flexible working is, is there potentially the, the um, hybrid working we know a few clients of ours are actually trialing this at the moment um, so we will be doing um, a couple of case studies around that that we will launch to the sector as well um, so is it is it the can it work to begin with um, what works what doesn't work what were their learnings and then um, sort of financial implications and things like that as well so again if anyone's doing this at the moment and, and wants to be part of this case study please let us know um, and again we can we can have these conversations and then the pulse for, pulse survey 2020 24 um we're hoping this is going to be bigger and better we want to collaborate with as many people as we possibly can get this out to as many people in the sector as we possibly can so we can get a really 
um, big pool of um, of answers and and a real great sample size because um, it's only going to it's only going to help the industry move forward. Um, and again, what we'd love to do is have conversations with businesses that potentially want to collaborate, maybe run their own um, surveys alongside the bigger one to see how they align um, with the um, the answers of of the sector as a whole. So if you're doing interested in doing something like that, please reach out to us. Um, and then finally, your ideas, um, you know, you may have some great ideas, you just don't have time to get to, we would love to hear them, maybe it's something that we can collaborate together with. Um, but in terms of, you know, you, you, the, the comments are there in terms of questions and things like that. But if you have your own ideas um, that you'd like to see us do, please let us know as well. Um, and then final slide from us. So this, you can download the surveys here. So this will take you through to a page on our website, you will have the three um, 2023 surveys in there, the results to download. So you've got the, the nursery and early years, you have the sports coaching and you have the wraparound. You'll also have the 2022 um, results on that page that you can download. Um, and then that will, uh, then you'll be able to compare answers and, and things like that. Um, I know the CAA are going to um, put this out tomorrow in a newsletter as well. Um, so you will have that. So if you if you can't take that, that screenshot now, that will come out tomorrow. So jump on there. I'd love to hear thoughts and feedback. Um, and of course, any sort of future questions that you'd like to see in there as well. Um, but I mean, that that's it from us. If you have any questions you want to pick up off of uh, offline or advice or support or anything like that, here are our details. Please reach out to, to either Steve or myself. Um, but hopefully you found um, found that quite interesting in terms of data points, maybe a few little nuggets that you can then go and implement into your own businesses um, as well. But guys, thank you so much for watching um, and hopefully speak to you all soon.